Hi, and welcome to this video of Dynamics 365 Talk, where I'll be discussing how we can track how long an opportunity has been in a sales stage. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a business process flow, and then we're going to track the duration of each individual stage. But before we get into it, let me just introduce myself. My name is Dion Taylor. I'm a Microsoft Business Applications MVP. Feel free to check out my blog at d365goddess.com. Follow me on Twitter at d365goddess or connect with me on LinkedIn by scanning the QR code you see on your screen. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna sh show you guys is how this is actually going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and, oops, create a new opportunity record. Let's just call this a test opportunity. You can put in an account here as well. And I'm just gonna go ahead and save and close that. Now let's open that opportunity. So out of the box, every time that we're moving to one of those steps here in the business process flow, what happens automatically is the pipeline phase is updated automatically by Dynamics V65. And it updates it with the category that we have selected for each of these steps in the business process flow. So let me show you what that looks like. This is that same sales process that we were looking at right here is our opportunity one equals Q. And if I look at the category of that stage, we can see that that's qualify. We have here opportunity 2D, that category is develop. And then three, we have propose. And then four, we have close. Now, what we're going to do, I'm actually going to add, or let me just go ahead and set this step instead of propose also to develop and then we'll set this to propose and then obviously we can have another step here or stage I should say and that says close and obviously you want to have a data step in here as well so let's just put a field in there we don't care about this at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and update that. Okay, let's just minimize that and let's update our opportunity here real quick. Now what is going to happen is that I'm going to write a workflow that each time that this pipeline phase is going to change, that's going to be the trigger for my real-time workflow. What it's going to do is it's actually going to create a sales stage history record, which is a custom entity. And it's going to keep the time, the from date and the due date of that particular record, which means, right, it's really going to represent how long something has been in a particular stage or stage category. So currently you see I created this record. So there was no previous stage. It's actually the qualification stage and it started, it entered that stage at 6.18 p.m. So it's a couple of minutes later right now. So let's go ahead and move to the next stage. And what the workflow should do then is date stamp my to field and it should create a new record here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save this real quick and then I'm going to refresh my page. So let's just go ahead and do that. And that's exactly what it did. So it time stamped that to field and then it created my new stage so I can see that it went from qualify into the develop stage. And now we have that start date and time and the to date and time. Now, if I actually open this up, you can see here, right, the fields, new record to qualify from date and time and to date and time. What we could also put on here would be a field that would actually subtract these values, right? So I can get the total duration of that 
as well but obviously that's optional and then on top of that you can even create charts and put those on a dashboard as well so you can see exactly um, which of those stages are kind of bottlenecking in the system all right so enough said let's just take a look at what I exactly did here. So the first thing I did is I actually created the sales stage history record. So let me just go ahead and pull that up. I actually created a solution for that. So I'm just going to go here to my old fashioned solution file here and I'm going to update or actually open up here my sales stage history entity. So you can see here it's called new sta sales stage history. I actually didn't put any ownership in it because uh, I did not select ownership for this. Um, or actually I did user or team is what it says here, but you don't obviously have to do that. If you want to give any, everybody or nobody access to that, you don't have to select that. So the fields that I added and you kind of saw it already when we were actually looking at this particular record, right? We need a previous field a new field and we need two date fields a from field and a to field so these are just regular single line of text fields but we also obviously because we're seeing it here in relationship to this opportunity we also need to have that look up to that opportunity field so let me again kind of show you oops what i did here i'm just going to go ahead and show you that form and here it is here's our previous field and I can go here onto details to kind of see what type of field it is I believe yeah this is a single line of text field and so is the other field the new field and then I also wanted to show you that I have an opportunity lookup, which is right over here. That's how we're tying it back to the opportunity. So you're just going to create a lookup field and you're going to select the opportunity for and as an entity for that field. But we also need to be a need to actually put a lookup field to the sales stage history. As you can see, here it is. This is the guy that is the sales stage history lookup on the opportunity record. So the way that is going to work is visible here. Now, again, think about when this workflow is being triggered, right? Every time when we go from one stage to the next stage in the business process flow, because that will actually update the pipeline field or the step name field that's the system name on the opportunity that's when it's going to get triggered so what is going to do is going to have two conditions it's going to check whether or not this is the first sales stage history record and it knows that by checking to see if this sales stage history lookup field on the opportunity has data in it or not so the first time Obviously, it's not going to have data with it in it. So it's going to say, yes, is this the first sales stage history record? Yes. So what we're going to do then is we're going to create that first sales stage history record. We're going to actually hard code the previous stage and we're going to set that to new record. Then in the new field, we're going to put in the pipeline field from the opportunity, which again is step name. It's the system name of that field. Then we're going to get set the from date and time to the execution time of that real time workflow. And lastly, we need to tie it back to the opportunity. So we're going to select the opportunity that triggered the workflow for the opportunity lookup in that sales stage history record. After that, we need to update the opportunity and we need to actually set the sales stage history lookup field we need to populate that with the record that we just created. So then when we move to the next stage in an opportunity, the workflow is going to run again. And then it's going to find that this is not the first sales stage history record. So we're going to follow the no path. So the first thing we want to do is the record that is in that sales stage history lookup field on the opportunity. We want to set the to field 
which is the end date and time, to the execution time again of that workflow. Then we're going to create a new sales stage history record. So we're going to set the previous stage field of the new record to the new field from the current sales stage history record. Then we're going to set again the new field to step name, and that's again that pipeline field on the opportunity. Then we're going to set the from to the execution time again of the workflow, and we're going to link it back to the opportunity. After that, we're going to again do the same thing we did previously. We're going to update the sales stage history lookup field on the opportunity with that newly created record, right? The sales stage history record that we just created. So that's how we're constantly date stamping the one that's currently in the lookup. Then we're creating a new record. We're populating a new record in the lookup. So we're dropping out the old one. We're setting in the new one, date stamping that one again, dropping that out, putting a new one in, etc. So now let's take a look at that workflow. Let me just go ahead and pull up my process over here. So this is my process name. I just called it opportunity sales stage history, and it's actually going to trigger on that pipeline field, right? That's automatically updated the pipeline phase by the system whenever we go and change status. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm actually going to deactivate that. So you're going to kind of see is I'm going to check whether or not this is that first sales stage history record, right? And I can do that by checking if the opportunity lookup of the sales stage history does not contain data. If that does not contain data, I'm going to create my first sales stage history record. And let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to set the previous, I'm going to hard code that and I'm going to write in there new record. That's what that is. What I did is I went in here and I said new record and I clicked OK and now I'm hard coding it. Then what I'm going to put in a new field is my opportunity pipeline phase field. And then I'm going to do the from the time is going to be, if I scroll down here, my process execution time. There, there it is. And I'm going to tie this obviously to my opportunity that kicked off this workflow. So that is all that I did. I'm going to save and close that. So that's how we created our first sales stage history record. Then what we want to do is we want to update that sales stage history record field with the one that we just created here on the opportunity. So we're going to update the opportunity, right? You're going to just do add step update record, right? But you got to make sure you're underneath this particular thingy right over here, this logic. So you're going to put your mouse here and then you're going to select that step. So we're going to set this to opportunity. And I am actually, let me just make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to search for, I can do that by hitting control F that will bring in my search button over here. And I know that it's called sales stage history, history, oh, history. I'm just going to go ahead. It's not that one, not that one. Here we go. Sales stage history lookup. So what I did here. I'm just going to delete this. We're going to look for sales stage history. Oops. So if we scroll all the way down here, it says create first sales stage history record, right? I'm going to click on that and I'm going to put that in that field. So if you were paying attention, you saw that it was pointing at this because I put a description in here. I can very easily find that record again. So that's all I did. I'm going to say, okay, oops, save it close. <laughs> and now I'm going to go to my second set of logic. Let's just pull this up. So I'm going to say the opportunity 
sales stage history lookup contains data already. And then the other thing I want to do, I want to make sure that if those stages that we saw, those stage categories are the same, right? Currently we have here, hang on, this was, I didn't save that. So we have propose here in the category and develop here. And if I click here in the 2D, we also have develop and the 3D, we also have develop. So I don't want to create two separate ones for them. Maybe I'm just considering both of them to be in the develop category. So I don't want to change. I don't want to create an additional one. I just want to measure both of them together. That's why I put this in here. Sales stage history lookup. The previous field should not equal whatever is in my opportunity pipeline phase, because then I don't want that to happen if it does equal that. And we do that, oops, I closed it out a little bit too quick. We, we select that field by just, let's just delete this by saying opportunity pipeline phase. I don't want this, this previous field to equal that. Cause if that's the case, I don't want to run that workflow. So if all of that is correct, I'm going to first update the two field on that existing sales stage history record, right? So we're going to say update. And that is that sales stage history lookup that's related to that opportunity. And again, I am just going to set my two field with that execution process time. So I'm just going to go here and drill, go all the way down process execution time. There we go. That's all we need to do. Then I want to create a new sales stage history record. So this is very similar to what you saw earlier, right? We're going to now go to bring in from the previous sales stage history lookup. We're going to bring in the new field because it used to be new, but now it's old. It's previous. So I'm going to say sales stage history. And I'm going to say I want the new field. And here we go. The new field from the one that's currently in that lookup. Then again, we're going to grab the pipeline phase from the opportunity. Opportunity pipeline phase. And then again, that execution time process. You saw me do that. And then obviously the opportunity. Let's just save and close that. And then lastly, one more time, we're going to grab this particular one that we just did. This is the second one that we created. Oops, this guy create new sales stage history record. We're going to update that again in that lookup field. So sales stage history lookup. And here we go. Here it is again. So I'm going to create new sales stage history record. So again, I'm going to Go ahead and scroll all the way down and here it is. Create new sales stage history record. I'm going to add it. I'm going to click OK and that is it. I'm going to save and close. And that is my workflow. So you guys all saw how that was working. I just wanted to show a couple of other things that we can actually do with this if you want to if you would want to. Again, what I said earlier is that you can actually put a duration field on those on those records as well so that we can start reporting on that. And this is a chart that I also built on that. So I can see here that my develop stage and my quote stage are taking an awful long time. But we can also put that information here on the state sales stage history record with, again, also that chart on the opportunity as well. And on top of that, I could also put some of that information directly on my summary page or my summary area here on my opportunity as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do not forget to hit that like button again and be sure to check back again next week because I'll have a brand new video for all of you guys. Have a great day, everybody, and stay safe.